Hello everyone, and welcome to the Gems of War Campaign 17, Week 10, Day 6, uh, second to last day of the campaign. Definitely make sure to finish it if you haven't already. So today, um, we're going to be doing a couple things. Obviously cleaning up quite a few of the events. The main thing I'm not sure what we're doing with is the ladder. Um, we're here currently. And a uh, leaderboard is there. <laughs> we'd have to get 100, 1,000. I did the math earlier. We'd have to do four hours straight of PvP tonight. Do I feel like doing four hours straight of PvP tonight? No. <laughs> so I think what we might try doing is aim for, like, fourth place and hope we're on, like, top three on someone else's leaderboard. Because I believe the most recent patch did not fix that bug. So we're probably just going to go get for, like, 50-ish thousand, 60-ish thousand and um call it there <laughs> and hope that's enough to be on the top of someone's leaderboard because uh, i'm almost guaranteed last patch didn't fix the top three thing so as long as you're top three in someone's bracket uh it doesn't actually matter if you're top three in your own but uh yeah i don't think we're doing that <laughs> we could it would take four hours but then they're just gonna grind more tomorrow too so i'm not sure we do have access to a really good one though we do have access to purple and I have to double buff anyways today, so I don't know. We might go for it. We'd have to do four hours straight of PvP, though. Which, uh, I really don't feel like doing. <laughs> like, I don't mind doing a little bit, but four hours straight. Because we're gonna have a five-hour boost, so of that five hours, four hours of it has to be us doing PvP. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm gonna skip on it. We're still gonna do some. Like, we're still gonna be doing, like, a little over an hour. Um, but I'm not gonna be doing four hours. <laughs> I don't think, but, uh. We'll definitely go take 4th place, if nothing else. And hopefully, uh, we can still get top bracket. Aside from that, of course, we still have Loraza's Lair going on. I'll uh, be making some progress there, just using our daily sigils. Uh, once we get to about 2.30 completion, we should be good to go. And the only other one was... What was the other one? The only other one was... Um, not Loraza's Lair. What's the other event? Oh, yeah. Underspire. Actually, I didn't even do Underspire's torches yesterday. So, yeah, we still have to go do all of those today, too. Anyways, where should we even start? Let's start with, uh, well, we have a couple of different events. I don't want to start with Loraza's Lair. I don't think, actually, do I? Actually, you know what? Maybe we do actually start with Loraza's Lair. Because Loraza's Lair should actually be one of the easiest ones. <laughs> Mostly due to the team that we can use. Out of everything, uh, I guess PvP would also be kind of easy, but, uh, once we start PvP, we kind of have to keep doing PvP. So we'll say PvP for last, for sure. But anyways, hello everyone! Hope you guys have been having a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Hello Bill! Hello Mark! Hello Draco! Hello Imper uh, Imperial! Hello Coopster! Hello Supernova! Hello Sushi Ninja! Hello Bill! Hello Supernova! Hello everyone else! Welcome, welcome, welcome. You did some backyard weed murdering. Nice. <laughs> yeah, luckily we have a pretty small yard, so there's not too much upkeep normally with it. Got like a small patch in the front and the back. There's technically some on the side, but it's mostly just stone, so there's almost a non-existent amount there. Yeah, I do not miss having a big yard. The amount of work you have to do ma maintaining a bigger yard is not fun. <laughs> Smaller yards are a lot more manageable. Like, if you have over an acre, like, that's almost a day-long project. <laughs> Doing anything with the yard. Maybe not literally day-long, but, you know, it sure feels like it. As far as daylight. I've only lived in one house that has had a yard that big, though. Uh, do I know much about the new raid boss? Raid boss, raid boss. Oh, do we have raid event on Monday? Uh, as far as what's ability is or anything? No, I have not the slightest clue. Though it likely does some part of what Catherix does. True, electric mowers do make it a lot easier. 
I didn't have electric mower at the time. Actually, I still don't have electric mower, mostly because the yard is too small for it. To even bother with one. Hello, Genki! Welcome, welcome. Oh, Genki, have you still been doing Power World? I didn't check the video yet, but I noticed when I was launching Gems of War, um, that they posted some kind of video thingy of an upcoming patch. I have no clue when the date is. Yeah, we'll definitely have to check out the game again then. They seem like they're doing uh, their biggest update since launch uh, very soon. Why did I take this one instead of middle? Should have went for middle so we can get the multipliers quicker. Because I don't think this one lets you go to the top rooms. Did I see that? There's a uh, Moonstone Slate Aspire crossover now. Of what? In Moonstone Island? Or a different game? Hello, Isabel. Welcome, welcome. Oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah, it makes sense. The game basically is just Slate Aspire with custom deck. I really hope gets a sequel sometime soon. I know they're working on one. It's more so a matter of when on earth it's going to be done. But uh, Slate Aspire devs... Gosh, they, I think they've been working on whatever game they're doing now for at least like six years now. I don't think it's directly a sequel to Slate Aspire, but it has like similar gameplay plan for the, compared to Slate Aspire. But I don't think it's a direct sequel. Despite thematically being somewhat similar. Mana surge. What's that, Loki? Colia, welcome, welcome. Also, we need to get two Vow Ravens between today and tomorrow. We should be able to. I sure hope so. Because one gets us to what? 210. Oh, wait, no, no, no. We already need one. Because what we have right now gets us to 190. What we have tomorrow gets us to 220. Then we just need one more sigil. So, yeah, never mind. We only need one Val Raven between the next uh, six floors. It should be very doable. Just gotta make sure it doesn't run away. That also technically means we can skip a, a floor once we do get it. Though not prior. But once we get the next Vow Raven, we can actually skip straight past uh, whatever floor we're on once we get it. If you get to unlock the Watcher. Oh, Watcher's a lot of fun. So I do feel like Watcher has the least amount of balance on it. There are only two turns you ever do with Watcher. Auto win or die. 
<laughs> There's almost nothing in between. She's one of the only characters that in the first zone on Max Ascension can you just absolutely decimate every boss you come towards. Like, her whole premise is you just need to scale so much in the first section that she doesn't fall off the rest of the run. Because she takes a ton of damage normally as you build her deck more defensively. But normally it's just like super hyper offense. It's a really fun character though. My favorite was still the silent. Between the four of them that they had. And as in most games, uh, poison is either very useless or very broken. And in that game, it was very broken. Of course, in Jim's Award, it's very useless. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is in, like, every game ever. There's no in-between. I've never seen a poison that's been balanced in any game ever. It's either the most useless mechanic or the strongest. With very minimal in-between. So it's kind of hard to balance damage over time in general in most games. Because it either does too little or too much. And if it does too much, then nothing does... Like, you basically only do damage over time effects. And if it does too little, you just basically ignore it. They tried to fix that in Gems of War by adding Bleed. Which is kind of like Poison, but it's a guarantee 10 true damage per turn once you get it fully stacked. But in the current state of the game, with how high stats go, 10 damage per turn is basically 0 damage. It's basically just become the new Poison. <laughs> poison is 0 0.5 damage effectively per turn. But with how high stats are, 10 damage per turn is also basically 0. It's too slow to really do much. Especially since you have to pass your turn for it to even do damage. There's also surprisingly like no boost, uh, blood boost ratio troops in the game. Aside from Thang, for, for, blah, 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 I can ask you. Aside from Thang, more faction. Uh, there isn't really much that really synergizes with it. Also, I don't believe there's a single double damage or triple damage trip in the game that does it be some bleeding. Despite there being quite a few skull gains under, uh, or t attack gains under, uh, bleed mechanic. Hello, yeah. Welcome, welcome. We got a Val Raven in play. Yeah, I haven't played Underspire in such a long time. I'm pretty sure we'd be so bad at Ascension 20 now. Because I haven't played Underspire for like a good year at this point. Unless you count Moonstone Island. But Moonstone Island's really easy compared to Underspire. Yeah, if we ever do revisit Slate Aspire, I kind of want to try that one um, unofficial, official DLC that they have. Someone actually basically doubled the amount of content that's in the game. 
where I think you can basically play as all the bosses in Slate Aspire. If we ever revisit the game, I definitely got to do that. Because I never even tried it yet. Actually, I haven't tried any mods for Slate Aspire. I've always just played the base game. But uh, there is a mod pack that um, basically lets you play as all the bosses. And they even have 20 ascension levels and everything else. How balanced they are, I'm not quite sure. It was like an unofficial mod for a while, but uh, I think they actually made it like an official thing that you could download for free. Like acknowledge as like free DLC essentially. <laughs> Oh yeah, they have a ton of mods for that game. I just never bothered using any. My biggest issue with mods in any game is mostly just how you balance it. Because generally mods are extremely unbalanced. <laughs> in one direction or the other. Like, I don't mind cosmetic mods and stuff as much, but ones that like directly affect gameplay are always kind of questionable. I feel like it ruins like the main core experience of the game. If you could just start changing the value of everything. For a second, come back. I think we're already up by now. Yeah, we're back. Oh, so I thought I silenced those sounds. Oh, it's not a system sound. It's my uh, other thing. Let's see. Let me try this again. Wait, no! My thing got unmuted. Oh, I wonder if it unmutes it when I restart. Oh, I see. Okay, I got a plan. I'm going to mute this. You guys can still hear me, right? You should be able to. Okay, I'm going to mute that. I'm going to mute that. What else can we still mute? Apparently, when I restarted the computer earlier, it unmuted my uh, OBS and system sounds. Alright, uh, should be good to go. Oh, wait, my desktop audio just completely went out, though. Wait, why is Jim's of War not doing any sound now? Okay, now that's confusing. Wait. Huh? I'm so confused. Why is Jim's of War creating no sound? Okay, now it is. Oh, me muting OBS mutes... The game? That's weird. All right, we'll keep OBS unmuted then. Because I think the pop-up that came up is associated to system sounds, not OBS, but there we go. That's yeah, weird. When I restarted the computer earlier, um, changed it back. Because I fixed that, like, literally the other day. But it seems to not save the settings after restart. Which might have been why I got reset when I uh, did the Windows update. It might not have been the Windows update that affected it. I think just restarting the computer <laughs> is actually what affected it, potentially. Oh gosh, you mentioned Yu-Gi-Oh! I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh! in like a good almost like 20 years. It's been a long, 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 long time. I mean, not 20 years, like 18 years. It's been a very absurdly long time. I probably wouldn't even recognize like modern day Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I would assume the meta has shifted just a, a little bit over 18 years. <laughs> Just slightly. The main thing that has made me never get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Is just seeing the dictionary that's written on some cards these days. 
Like, yes, there were some complicated cards back in the day. But you didn't need, like, a magnifying glass to read the fine prints of the document that you're putting onto the board. <laughs> like, there are entire textbook worth length of cards these days, it feels like. At least compared to what it used to be. Where you could easily summarize what a card does in, like, a few sentences. Hello, Chad. Welcome, welcome. Ninety-nine per ninety percent of Yu-Gi-Oh cards have gotten banned. <laughs> Is the meta game that broken that they had to do that? I know there's some obvious ones they have to ban. Like I know one of the OG ones back in the day was Pot of Greed. And then they made like a billion different pot of greeds after to try to balance how broken initial pot of greed was. As it was a card with 100% value with no downside at all. It was literally just free card draw. on our final sigil here. Then we'll go hand out the first code. Then probably clear out all dailies, mess with Underspire, because we actually didn't do yesterday's Underspire, so I'll mess with that for a little bit. And I guess we're doing some PvP. I said earlier I would take fourth. I might just take fifth. I mean, yeah, fifth. I don't know. We'll see. I know for sure we're not doing four hours of PvP. <laughs> I would be up till after midnight if we did that. I actually have something I need to do tomorrow morning. I do want to get to bed at a semi-reasonable hour. Yeah, people have been going really crazy with PvP leaderboard lately. I think the lower end of uh, PvP leaderboard is going to be over 200,000 by the end of the week. It's already at like 180,000 right now. It's kind of insane. Alright, uh, never mind. It might be 180,000 by the end of the week, but still. Like the rate that we're getting approximately, though, I think we could do a little bit quicker than it. But on purple, when we can't use the talk shaka, we're getting like 18,000 an hour. So if it does get to 180,000 here, that's basically 10 hours of PvP in a week. Which isn't anything too crazy. It's like, what, hour, hour and a half a day. But uh, it's still a lot of time to commit to PvP. Compared to what we were before, which was like barely an hour a week. <laughs> to now have to do like 10-ish hours. Because our ladder was at, um, yeah, 102,000 right now. 
If we want to take fourth, it's about a little over an hour. Or if we want to do a very realistic amount, we could take fifth. <laughs> Which would take uh, almost no time at all. Especially since we'll be double buffed tonight. Because I actually have to go double buff. Which is good too, because we have a good uh, section. We have access to purple. So we can get all of our extra magic and everything. So if there ever was a time to grind, it would be now. Which is why I was tempted to consider it, but... um. Oh no, I definitely wouldn't do it for five hours, that's for sure. I don't know, we should do it for some amount though. Because it will be the easiest we can grind all weekend. Yeah, I'm not sure if I would ever get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! After how long I've been away from it. It's one of those kind of game types that's just really hard to get back into after a while. Though, in regard to card games, I might actually check out um, Pokemon's mobile version that they're releasing in the near future. They announced it like a month ago. And uh, even though I collected them as a kid, I never did like properly learn how to play Pokemon. I would definitely say the metagame for it's probably simpler than what Yu-Gi-Oh! is these days. Though I say that, but there's probably some kind of absurd combos <laughs> out there. I could only imagine. Uh, is there anything good here? Do I even need adventure board? No, it's just do PvP. So anything we need here then is the 10 diamonds, or however many this is. Alright, we did that, we did that. Let's go clear our dungeon. Can we get top three? Top three? Oh, <gasps> is today today? No! No! It was five. <laughs> Unfortunate.
That's the second time this week we've had a situation like that. It's like those slot machines where, like, guarantee almost gives you two options that are correct, but then the third one's always wrong. <laughs> That's what it feel, feels like trying top row um, dungeon every day. You roll two, but you always fail the third. <laughs> Got some rigged slots over here. Oh, we have 20% less stats. I kind of already knew that, but it is so noticeable after you're starting to cast a little. It's actually amazing how big of a difference that makes. Oh, you got a perfect top row? Nice. Huge congrats. Oh, we got stun too. I was wondering why we're getting like no mana. No Takshakas to use, unfortunately. Hey, at least we got 20 Garnet to make up for it, I guess. Though I would have much preferred 120 Dragonite. Alright, uh, so we only have two big things left then. Oh okay, yeah, let me go ahead on a code. I said I'd have to do it after Lyra's was Lyra, I didn't yet. Find out two codes tonight, of course. Find out the first one now and the other one in a little bit here. Here you guys go. Enjoy. All right. Next, we have Underspire and PvP. So let's do Underspire next. Uh, we actually didn't do last night's battle. And depending on how things go, we might be able to finish it today. And then scout out tomorrow. If we can get perfect path both times, uh, we'll be close, if not all the way today. And then tomorrow, all we have to do is um, scout out the dead ends. I am also still using this team, by the way. I feel like I should tweak it some. Because it's starting to fall off this deep. But in all fairness, there aren't too many other alternatives. I guess, actually, there is one big one. Running that one brown Doom Muffin is one of the biggest alternatives available. Wait, what? Oh, did I just throw Ketris? I, I meant to throw my weapon. Oops. I just wasted Ketris on that. I thought that was my weapon. <laughs> Not sure why I thought that. Definitely. I mean, I was wondering, wait, where's my follow-up? <laughs> I definitely did not mean to Ketris that. Oh, thank you. Ever just uh, claimed a code for us? And we'll have another one in a little bit. Alright, scrolls we'll just leave there for now. Let them do whatever. Throw a pokey poke on you. They're a nice big double burst. Throw that out there. Oh, hello, Umberta. Welcome, welcome. Well, we still build teams on videos and everything with the cheaper stuff. The only reason I use the more expensive stuff on stream to grind is if we have access to it. Obviously, we're going to do the thing that is quicker. Well, normally. And this is more fun. <laughs> Sometimes we don't do the thing that's quicker. <laughs> so I shouldn't say always. But um, a lot of times we do do whatever just is, you know, quicker. Regardless of how expensive the team is. Because if we have access to it, um, you know, it's normally better just to win quicker. But uh, that's why on all of our videos, I try to stop myself from ever using Stellarix and similar things. And why we always have the low rarity builds and everything else. Just so we do build with cheaper stuff. Because otherwise, 80% of all teams right now would just be Stellarix. <laughs> and or Takshaka.
I also feel like putting Soothsayer in second slot. The problem is he's blocking too much mana if I put him there. But I kind of need him to tank for our extra stats. He's had to comply. <laughs> All good. Hello, Tyrion. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Stellarix is quite a grind. Oh, we got a first try. Nice. Okay, we, we're actually on track to finish it today. Because I don't even think I bought my torches yet today, have I? I have not. So we currently have 20 torches. Uh, 20 torches is enough to make it if we get it on first path. Actually, even second path, potentially. Because we can get it within 14 rooms. See, we're almost there. And then tomorrow we'll basically just be going for all the dead end rooms then. With whatever we have left. Got pretty good overall pacing on Underspire this week. And I'm not referring necessarily to the team, though the team is way better than what we've had in the last couple of weeks. But um as far as like not finding every single room, like we found very few dead ends this week so far. I was about to go cast that. That's the main thing I hate about this troop. And one of the reasons why Takshaka, Eye of Argus, and other things are probably ultimately going to be better than this guy. He doesn't use yellow himself. If he created blue lightning gems, that would be a completely different story. But he creates yellow lightning gems when he himself does not use yellow. Obviously, other things on your team can use yellow. But it really hinders what he can do with like two or three of them on a team. Or even just one in this case, because we can't run more than one at the moment. But it really hinders what you can ultimately do. Since he's basically restricted to have to be um, with a yellow. Don't work any feedback into himself directly. He still does, just not directly. Oh, Tyrion, what you were mentioning? Oh, let's see. Wait, I don't see what you're pointing at, though. Oh, 30 Shine Lens today. Nice. Do any of them have zero speed stat? <laughs> or is that even possible in uh, in Pokemon Go? It might not be. Those competitive zero speed Incineroars. <laughs> uh, let's see, what do we need here? We'll go for that. I haven't played competitive Pokemon in a while, but I'm pretty sure Incineroar is just as broken as it's been since day one. Actually, every generation is somehow keeps getting more broken. I don't know why they do that, but they do. Are Sentinel rooms a certain color? Um, No, they could be under any rarity. There's like a very slightly higher chance of getting them based on rarity. Like a tier 5 room has a slightly higher chance than a tier 1. But it's a pretty small difference. But no, every single dead end room from tier 1 all the way to the legend or mythic, whatever it goes up to, all have a chance of giving you the uh, sentinel troops. With a very slightly marginal higher rate for uh, higher rarity ones. I said hello, Logic Slayer. Welcome, welcome. Alright, oh, uh, what do we need here? We'll go for that. Surge. 
Oh, so I would love to cast something. <laughs> what a weird fight. Web in general, when you have no counter to it, just so annoying. I feel like in most fights, there's very little counterplay to web. Also, was he webbed? Why is this thing level one? Apparently, even he got webbed. <laughs> Can't even survive his own webs. Get enough damage, get enough damage. Is that enough? Yeah, it is, but he got summoned, no! Why do I feel like we've restarted this fight like three times now? I should have just Ketris there. Ketris actually has a bigger boost ratio than the new guy. Just without the man accumulation. A lot of times the new guy does more overall damage, but if you just need just a single cast, uh, Ketris is still better. Do you think the lantern should be refunded if you use it and lose the battle? I've had that happen to me like two or three times now. Um, it would be nice. Though no sigil like that currently works that way. I should have done that the other way around. I just assumed it'd be enough damage, it wasn't. Because we could have gotten some free explode. Because we know the battle's not going to end from casting both. We should actually cast um, Ketris, then the bull, rather than the other way around. Though in that case, I should have done the other way around. If we know for sure two can kill, I should do King first and then um, Ketris. But if we know for sure double cast won't kill, we should do it the other way around. If it does kill, we do this first, just so we can get more mana to try to extra turn into the other. And the other way, it gives us more mana. So that when we need to go get our third hit, uh, we'll have some mana going into it. Oh, there's a door, though that was guaranteed. Though, where's all of our paths? <laughs> this is basically a straight line. I guess we have one going towards the top. But our path since then has basically has been a straight little snake line. I like, guess not straight, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a path with no off cuts or off sections. Even though it's swirling around like a snake, it doesn't actually branch out. That should be enough to kill, hopefully. Definitely is. As he devours us. Which I think is surprisingly good at randomly devouring. Oh, yeah, we have either up or uh, right. I'm feeling an up. I'm feeling a double diverge or even triple diverge up with it going to left. You cleared Pure Faction 500 for this place today? Nice. Yeah, it's one of the more annoying ones for sure. Did you end up using the new troop for it? Because this is one of the few times where the new uh, fifth troop for faction is actually usable for the pure faction. As sad as it is, that's actually a, a rather a rarity. 
that the uh, new troop is actually good for it, but it was this time around. Or did you go the old uh, double mana core route? Which is still very strong. Oh, didn't I say exactly this? Oh, no, never mind. It's only a double path. I said it was going to be a triple path and it was going to be to the left. And now we got a double. Oh, you know what? Actually, is it physically impossible to be a triple? So it's technically still correct. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I didn't realize uh, we're that far against the wall. It's actually physically impossible for it to go up. Otherwise, it probably would have. Mana surge. Mana surge. Mana surge. Mana surge. For a second, I thought he created lightning gems. I was like, wait, you don't have a lightning gem mechanic. But no, that was just our turn rolling over. I oh, used a new team that we showed? Nice. Yeah, it gets a lot of extra bonus stats. Was your first slot still alive going into the final fight? The new guy? I forget his name. Or did it die prior? Because you get a lot of bonus stats for the final fight if you can keep him alive till then. It's one of the biggest benefits of the team compared to the previous version. Because even if you die at any point during a fight, you keep your at start a battle bonus. And if he dies prior, it'll be three times. But if you make it to the fight with it, you'll have the four times bonus. Ooh! Wow, tier four dead end room right there. Yeah, if you get really high stats, uh, pure faction can be pretty easy. And this is definitely one of the ones to do it to. Because this place with low stats is super bad. Or not what we're doing right now, but um, uh, Loraz's lair with low stats. Because the lower your stats, the luckier you need to get with all the RNG mechanics. And the higher your stats, the more leeway you have. So the point you can pretty much just brute force it with skulls. Is there a max to leveling factions? Uh, your best is a 300 horde. Oh, it goes to 1,000. Uh, very few people have bothered doing it. It's actually a huge waste of gold. That you could just be putting into your guild or other things. But um, yeah, they cap out at 1,000. I think my highest is like 222 or something. Or 240 or something, somewhere around there. But yeah, it gets really expensive to max. Very few people have ever bothered to do so. Depending on what treasures you have, it could take upwards of a million gold. Or sorry, a billion gold. Though with better treasures, obviously it's cheaper. But we're easily talking several hundred million gold. Like, the amount I've lifetime donated into my own guild is about how much it would cost to go get a level 1,000 faction. Like, the total gold I've put into my guild over the last, like, seven or eight years, or however long it's been, is how much gold it would cost to level 1,000 the faction. Almost no one has done it. It's a crazy grind. Not only does it require you to do your three daily uh, factions every single day, which I personally skip these days for... Actually, for about six years now, I feel like. Five or six years. I skip that daily, personally. Because we already have uh, every faction maxed. Though you still get those chaos shards, which can give you more treasure. Oh, wow. Double dead end. I guess I, I should have assumed that based on what we got there, but well. We'll go take this. But yeah, it is absurd to try to get a level 1,000. I think only a few dozen people have ever bothered doing it in the history of the game. And I don't think there's a single person in the whole game who has two level 1,000 factions. Everyone who has done it, I'm pretty sure, stopped at one. Yeah, the amount of stats you would have from 1,000 is pretty absurd. It would make basically everywhere just like a cakewalk. You just touch... We're well, not everywhere, but you know, that location. I mean, like, any team you use. <laughs> we'll just get obliterated. 
I'm not even sure how much magic you even get by then. It has to be over a hundred something. What even is the stat difference? I don't think I've ever bothered checking that. What's the stat difference between a 200, which is pretty realistic to get, and a 1000? So if I go just click on like Wild Court, we're at 200. This is a pretty easy, nice stopping place to do it at. Uh, let's see. Plus you have those power potions these days too, is something to consider. Wait, do the power potions auto adjust here? Wait, let me check something. If I get to 25... No, it doesn't. So I have to add them at the end. Wait, is it quicker to go the other way? I think if I go all the way to one, it overflows. Let's hope so. So the stats that you have at this is, let's just say 27 magic. And the other ones will just multiply uh, relatively. So this is double that and that's double the double. So we can do it based on that. Okay, so that's at 200. Let's see what 100 is. I mean, 1,000, uh, I mean. So normally we'd have 27 plus that one power. So that would have been technically 34 magic. How much is it for a thousand? So we're talking a difference of 34 compared to... Oh, this isn't with the extra horde stats either, right? Isn't there a way to get like extra horde thingies? From your uh, kingdom upgrade? Uh, 30... Wow, that's a huge difference. So we have 34 for 200. And 1,000 is 7 times 33 plus 135. Calculator, go real quick. I don't want to math that in head, even though it's kind of easy. Uh, so times that by 7. Plus 135. Wow. <laughs> that is 366 extra magic. That is absurdly high. But yeah, 366 ex extra magic for a level 1000 horde. Compared to 200 where you get 34. It is over 300 more magic. <laughs> Though it is absurd to get a, a kingdom like this. Like we're talking almost a billion gold. Plus farming um, daily underworld for literal years. So that you can stock up on lamps and sacred treasure. But yeah, it's over 300 more magic than level 200, which is a pretty common stopping place. As diminishing return from there starts to get pretty uh, steep. Alright, uh, we're done. Let's go finish our Underspire. Or at least as far as we can get with six more fights, which technically is finishing it if we can find the correct path. Alright, uh, Sun Calls Fallacy. Let's go to this one. I'm pretty sure it's the other one. But we're already two rooms invested into this one, so we're going to keep going. If you were to do one to a thousand, which one would you choose? Um, probably City of Thieves still in the current state of the game. While there are some that have four treasure room compared to its three, it still has the best overall layout of those treasure rooms and multiplier rooms and everything. So even though it has one whole less treasure room, it gets better value. It also has some pretty good coloration, blue, purple. There's a lot of really good teams you can use there. You have access to Thrall Leprechaun, you have access to uh, Rowan Quick Kill, uh, you have access to uh, Takshaka and to uh, Stellarix. Like pretty much every meta at every point in the game you have. Um, you do have access to Tesla, though you don't have access to Quick Kill Tesla there. I guess that's the main thing that's missing from that location. Though realistically, if you're trying to get a thousand all stats or a level thousand kingdom, you're definitely not going to care about using a Tesla team by that point. kill. I thought I would have enough damage. Apparently not. Catrus will, though. Nope, oh, don't even need it. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, room! If this is it, uh, we can already start scouting some. 
And then tomorrow we'll just be pure scouting then. Oh, he drained the guy I was about to go use. Oh, this is one of the big issues with Ketris. Whenever the enemy has a lot of stealthy, you can't actually target it where you want. Doesn't matter as much now that we just got the double kill. But earlier we'd been forced to have to click on this one. Which I guess also wouldn't have been that big a deal, but still. Oh, we got it. Right, this one's obviously a lantern. Or a lantern the Rubraft that doesn't exist on this fight. For our double gold. And I've also stopped lanterning the final fight. Mostly because we're kind of good on pet orbs. Well, I still need more. I'm not in like a rush to get more. So we're just going for the two super good ones. The um, gold and the silver. Silver is on floor four. Gold is on floor six. Which is what we're doing right now. very easy to identify the um, tier 6 room as it is currently the only one that doesn't have a gem dragon. <laughs> they haven't fixed that since it came out. I wonder if they're even still aware of it. I wonder if there's anyone in the betas who ever mentioned it. Because I know when I used to do them way back in the day I would mention like a whole wall of text of a bunch of old bugs not fixed yet that you should, should probably consider. <laughs> and I would definitely mention that like every single time. Like, hey, they're, they're still not Rubaraf in this room, by the way. <laughs> I wonder if they're even aware. Because we're like three patches in without Rubaraf being added to that room. And it's obviously intended that he's supposed to be there. It's not like one of those ambiguous things. It's like, wait, is it intended? Is it not intended? No, he's, he's definitely supposed to be there. <laughs> he just isn't. Let's go take out Final Fight. Though it is one of those things that's actually beneficial if they don't fix it. The fight is obviously easier without Rubraf there. Not that the heart pipe fight would be particularly hard with it. Like this Diamantina fight will always be harder than it. But it's ultra cakewalk since there's uh the main threat that's supposed to be in the fight isn't even in the fight. I just realized I should have done that to the side. I just took double double lightning gem, but with the shape that we just destroyed it, it did almost nothing. Oh, no, no, we actually still got the other destroyed. Never mind. Oh, I should have taken red to green. I mean, red to yellow. That's red. There's almost nothing. We could have taken it for free the other turn. We could actually still lose this. Uh, I need... The biggest issue right now is I need Ketris to cast. The other other biggest issue is we have all this yellow I don't actually use. Which is like the weirdest thing about him. In fact, he doesn't use yellow. There we go. Bit of a sketchy fight there, but... Down it goes. Okay, we have two torches to do something with. Let's go to the super early sections and see if we have any branching double paths. The only problem with how decent we did going through everywhere, path-wise, is we have so few dead ends. Now here's a double that we get to go take. Let's start from this one, I guess. Should probably go get a different AoE team for good. Take out these super early ones, but I only have to do two fights right now, so we'll change our team for tomorrow. And then the only thing that left objective-wise would be uh, PvP then. And I actually have to double boost today. So I'm not sure if I'm going to particularly power farm uh, today for it though. Leaderboard outscaled us. Ooh, here we go. Please give us a troop already. We're like three months now without one. We got a worm. Nothing. Unfortunate. I don't think I need that worm pet, but let me go double check just in case. 
Nope, don't need it. Okay, only thing left. PvP. Ton of PvP. Uh, let's see. PvP. So with how much we have right now, I do have to double boost. So we should go get ourselves extra purple magic and probably just extra base magic. It's so like one like this and then the other thing. So let me go get purple magic first. Because that will boost our overall damage substantially more. Where is it? Uh, let's see. Gain one magic for each purple ally. So we want to go take these then. Oh good, we can run Stellarix here. Perfect. Oh, this is just brown restriction? Okay, that's not too bad. And then the other one we'll do under purple restriction. And then we'll go get our Valhawks, get a little bit of PvP rating. I'm not sure what number I'm aiming for. 100% we gotta get at least 5th place and move up a rank. Uh, I could consider 4th, but it would take us about an hour of farming. And there's no way I'm taking 3rd and I'm just gonna hope we out leaderboard someone else on their leaderboard and hope that glitch still works, which I think it does. Because uh, there's no way we're going for what will effectively be like 7 more hours of PvP over the course of the weekend. A few hours I don't mind, 7 hours more. <laughs> That's a little too much. That's the only really bad thing about the new PvP system. It kind of forces everyone to do slightly more PvP. And then everyone doing slightly more PvP makes everyone else do slightly more PvP. And then that just leads to an infinite chain loop that causes everyone to just play an absurd amount of PvP. And of course, there's still the issue where lower level players get EXP way quicker. Or not EXP, but VP, I mean. Stop using the EXP booster to make PvP easier. Oh no, I want the extra EXP though. I'm just hoping they tweak it at some point. Because I know they've had a lot of vocal opinions of people in like ultra endgame in this game. Like I'm talking like people over level 3000. Who've been really complaining about how PvP works right now. <laughs> because obviously they're over level 3000. And other similar, like, absurdly high-level people. Because they're put at a huge disadvantage with how it works right now. Let's see, what's the highest level on leaderboard? Look at this. <laughs> 1,500, 1,500, 1,300. Alright, those are, like, normalish levels. 2, 2,000. Like, look at how many more fights this is. Like, 4,590. I'm willing to make a bet this is more battles than how much first place has. Oh, actually, surprisingly not. Though it is more than second place and every other one. Well, oddly enough, first place does actually have more battles than it. But still, look at that. Eighth place in the same amount of battles otherwise would basically be second place if they were lower level. But because they're level 2,700, uh, it's not possible. Where are all the 3,000s? I'm surprised. Not a single 3,000 on leaderboard. Of course, it's a lot harder for them to do so. But uh, I'm not seeing a single 3,000 yet. 2,700 is the highest one in 8th place. Seeing a higher level than that. It's pretty high other levels, but not higher. Interesting. Yeah, 2,700 something is the highest on leaderboard right now. Anyways, let me go get our other buff. Because this is actually a double buff day. Which makes me tempted to go for more PvP grind today, but also... Uh, it's not that big of a difference. It's a difference of 6 magic. Though tomorrow we're almost guaranteed not going to have access to purple section. Meaning we probably won't be able to utilize the 20 magic from uh, pure purple team. Seven hours of gold farming PvP go. <laughs> Let 
If I wanted to take top three tonight, I would have to do, um, I'd have to play for four hours. We'd have to play till 1 a.m. my time. If we wanted third place. I think that's worth it just for a deep book. The deep book is nice, but it's not that nice. Plus, there's still a chance we can glitch out and get top um, three even with uh, without getting top three. Because I'm pretty sure the leaderboard glitch still works as long as you're first, or as long as you're in top three on anyone's leaderboard, um, you will get the reward. Even if you're not top three in your own leaderboard, I'm almost guaranteed that hasn't been fixed from the previous patch. Yeah, that used to be a trick back in the day. I'm not sure if that works in the current state of the game. But there was a trick uh, in the past in Gems of War. Where if you left your guild and then rejoined another guild and then left your guild. Um, the kind of battles that you get are substantially different from both. But also still kind of repeat a little bit. So you were able to manipulate your, uh, like what kind of teams you got. To make it a lot easier. By constantly going into a guild and then going out of a guild. And then eventually doing your fights out of a guild. Once you get like a really good roll for it. I don't think that does as much in the current state of how PvP works. Because most fights are pretty free. But it was a strategy you utilize a lot in the past. I assume to some degree still works. Though the way that battles are distributed doesn't really matter as much. Unless it really makes your VP numbers higher potentially. Actually there's one way to know for sure if it's still quite a thing. Is there anyone in top 100 not in a guild? That'd be the easiest way to know if it's still a thing. Uh, guild... Ah, uh, it might be. Um... Is that the only one? Five... Yeah, I don't think it might be. Because I'm only seeing one... Also, what's tip top? Is this a new guild trying to, uh, take leaderboard? Are they in top 25 yet? I don't think I've ever heard of that guild. But they have like four people on leaderboard right now. Yeah, there's only one person not in guild, so I assume that's not as much of a thing these days. Mostly because all the fights are pretty straightforward and easy anyways these days. Unless you go in like middle, but no one's really doing middle because you can't be bloodthirsty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that person just happens to not be in a guild. Well, I gotta see, is Tip Top actually in um... Oh, you have to go all the way out to check it. Oh, let's see. No, not Tower of Doom. Uh, though we've been done with Tower of Doom since, like, Wednesday. Up so much so. Uh, the guild finished out the rest. Thank you, guild. Ooh, even got a silver orb. Ooh, shiny. Let's see, who did worse than bare minimum? Tyrion! <laughs> You're in the worst than bare minimum club. <laughs> what happened to your other legendary room? Did you skip one? Uh, let's see... Yeah, we have two people at 58. What happened there? Because the only way that can happen while still going all the way would be skipping a um, lucky room. Which I assume is what happened here, because he did every other room. He might have accidentally skipped a lucky. Ah, oh, there we go. We got all rewards. Anyways. Uh, let's see. What am I doing? We did that, we did that. Let's go do some PvP. Oh yeah, I was gonna check the guild thing. Let's see if Tip Top is there. Oh gosh, I did the same thing again. Uh, let's see, League. Tip Top, Tip Top. I'm not seeing any Tip Tops. Must be a newer guild. Though based on how much trophies they're getting, they will see them soon probably. I'm not seeing them down there. Oh, we're about to pass Interim soon. Come on guild, we got this. <laughs> We might not be able to take top 25 quite yet, but we'll be able to take top 26. <laughs> we gotta go over and take Interim. I remember when they were like the biggest guild in the game. Fighting Anonymous. I'm not sure what happened to their guild. Or why they're at like 15 out of 30. Uh, anyways, what am I doing? Uh, let's go to PvP. Yeah, I think I'm just overtaking top 5. If we go for an hour, we could take top four. And if we go for like four hours, we could take top three. <laughs> I just don't feel like doing that for four hours. So let's take top five for now. 
Hopefully we'll win someone's leaderboard. Right, we still haven't taken our three daily Valhawks yet. This is actually the first fight where we can get one, so it's pretty lucky. Is faction still bugged? Uh, what about faction? I don't think there was any bug with it earlier. I said, hello, Miss Insane Witch. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, trophy numbers in the current state of the game is basically just an indicator of how long a guild has existed. Though there have been some guilds that have really power grinded it in recent years. The main reason I kind of want to get back to top 25 at some point is it's a lot easier to recruit if you're in top 25. As there's actually a button that you can press that shows you the top 25 guilds in the game. And we're like right below that threshold right now. It's a bit easier to recruit if we could say we're top 25. It doesn't make too big a difference, but it definitely helps. Which means we might do a trophy grind at some point. Because we're easily going to get 26 automatically at this point. It's more so can we push to 25 up the other rank. Hello, Drago. Welcome, welcome. Oh, wow, what just happened? We had a team and then we didn't have a team. <laughs> what was that cascade? We just did like a 12 cascade there. We somehow potioned into a potion into a potion. None of which we actually created ourselves. found one Valhawk so far. We definitely gotta go get the other two. And then we'll just push up for one rank for now. And we'll probably call it there for now. Speaking of which, uh, let me go ahead and code right now then. Uh, do you know what? I'll hand out code on third Valhawk. How about that? Then we'll do the last little bit of grind, however much we need. You should be at one right now. Soon to be all of them. Yeah, let's go get our three Valhawks, and then uh, we'll hand out code, and then we'll grind until we're uh, top five, I guess. And hope we just get onto someone's top three. We'll find out on Monday. I'll right, catch you later, Miss Insane Witch. Have a good night. The overall, I would still say our Valhawk luck has been below average. Though, yesterday we did get lucky. Today we technically started lucky with the first battle, though we haven't seen one since. Though if we get a second one in the next few fights, we are actually still on the luckier side.
Okay, how hard is it going to be to get our Valhawks to die? <laughs> Are we going to gain a level by the time we get to it? He's at this rate. There we go. Hey, I just need one more. And sometime tonight, I think I will grind a little bit more in PvP. We're just not going to do it right right now. Though we will still do it within like the next four hour period so we can still get our bonus. Probably right before I go to bed. Plus, we need to throw the XP booster then anyways. Because I didn't actually throw it on stream today. I might even just use it for dust double instead of PvP. So hello, Australia land. Welcome, welcome. Uh, have we got any uh, ETA on Guild Wars in the future? No. I would say, as it's pretty much has been recently, it's basically discontinued until otherwise noticed. <laughs> like, at this point, I, I think we might go another patch or two before we even get Guild War again. I think they might need to rework it or do something. I have no clue what, but... Uh, yeah, we have no clue. <laughs> it's been delayed like six times now. Since December. Could still be another whole month or two before we see another Guild War. You are doing Nightweaver with purple buff? Oh, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I can get a lot of damage down. I oh, still haven't found the final Valhawk yet, right? Okay. I'll hand out code as soon as we get the final Valhawk, and then we'll go until we get top five. Hopefully, Guild War will come away, go away, just like that friends button. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they try adding a feature like that back into the game. But yeah, we were originally going to get like a friends list and everything else like that, but they end up scrapping it. They did ultimately put it into their other game of Puzzle Quest 3. But with very limited functionality. But now that they got it working in that game, they might consider bringing a similar infrastructure to Gems of War at some point. Show us the Valhawk, then we'll go hand out code. But at this rate, I think we might already have our points by the time we get to the Valhawk. If we're going to keep going dry on Valhawk. There it is. All right, go time. I don't have it queued up. Let me go get it. Uh, here it goes. Go. Final code to stream. We'll have another two tomorrow as we do every night, as well as go over all the weekly spoilers for next week. But there you guys go. Enjoy. Definitely feel free to leave a like in the stream. Helps a lot and is greatly appreciated. Yeah, that's the last of the monolith stones we need to go get. Now, how much more do we still need to take fifth? Alright, let's go farm like another 2,500 now then. And then we'll end it there. 
Because I wanted to take at bare minimum fifth place. We can't not go further than that. Gotta at least take fifth. Which, based on the rate that this team can farm at, it should only take like 10 minutes, not even. Five, ten minutes. Depends what kind of multipliers we get for our battles. Come on, show us better multipliers than that. 32, 32, 34. Also, hello, Chris. Welcome, welcome. At least it's better than 25, 25, 25. Also, using this team, it's actually quite insane how night and day it is between this and, like, Triple Takashaka. Never thought I'd see the day where Leprechaun becomes... I, I wouldn't say useless. It's still absurdly good. But, uh, it has finally been outdone. Still feels weird. But the uh, like seven year long reign of Leprechaun has ended. Talk Shaka. But there's still a lot of situations where you use it, including this one. Few more fights and we'll see how much more we still need. We should almost be there by now. You don't think switch players can target Takshaka for three times? No. Even if you're up to date as far as updates, uh, I think you guys are still behind on Mythics. So it could still be another half a year to a uh, year and a half before you guys get it. Oh wait, did we just lose? Wait, did we just lose on the easy fight? Because we got webbed. I guess I just have to wait out a web. Problem is he keeps rewebbing. Oh wait, uh, I forgot we have bluffs. We literally have the hard counter for it. I keep forgetting wands there. <laughs> the other version of the team wouldn't have one. This one does. Kind of amazing that the easiest fight was actually the hardest one. <laughs> Good old web. Honestly, I find web to be more annoying than freeze or silence these days. Well, I guess it is technically weaker silence. Silence just isn't used as much. The ways to apply silence are a lot harder compared to web. Alright, how far are we? We need another 1,400. Let's go get it. That's like um, 10 to 14 fights, give or take.
Wait, you, oh wait, you're getting update to current version, i.e. skipping the mythics? Oh! Oh, then it's gonna be a lot harder to get Takshaka then. Because that means you'd have to do it with 1,200 diamonds. Because trying to do it through event keys, I think there's like four mythics there now. Like three or four. So you basically have to do it through, um... Through diamonds. Better try getting one through event keys and then do the other two through diamonds. But it's like a 1 in 3,000 or 1 in 4,000 chance from event keys. It's really rare. Technically say less or more because you have 0.11% chance, but it's still an absurd number. To the point where diamond's the only other realistic way. Unless you're missing a lot of mythics from there. But if the only thing you're missing is Takshaka, uh, it's best just to save all the diamonds up for, um, for it. If that's the only mythic you're missing from uh, Mr. Scales. If you are missing multiple, then you can just go event key for one and then do the rest off of diamonds. Which is, say, 4,000 diamonds then. Oh, so it's possible to run double Takshaka teams. I personally don't because obviously we have access to three. But you can easily put Leprechaun or Hero or something else on the team. It doesn't have to be three. I would also allow you to gain Class XP if you haven't maxed everything yet. As you can run um, Stellarex Wand with any Hero class to go get it leveled. And then double Takshaka. It's slightly slower, but you get Class XP on any class and you have both Dispel and Cleanse. And it makes it so you only need two instead of three. Whichever comes first, Diamonds or Soulforge. Well, you would need a lot of event keys. Like, we're talking like around 10,000 to try to event key for it. Which I also have laying around, but that's still a lot of event keys. Like, I think that's like half our stack right now. How many event keys do I have? I'm not even sure these days. Um, yeah, that would almost be half my stack. If we were to try to event key for three Takshakas, it would take about 10,000, give or take a couple thousand event keys. Alright, oh, we need a little under a thousand. Up, oh, tribute trader. Let's go finish this out. Oh, an 80, perfect. And then we'll claim our fifth place, and that's about as high as we're gonna get. <laughs> and we'll try taking fourth tomorrow. Or even later tonight. Because we're currently in top 1,000 for PvP, so if we're in other people's top, you know, if we're on other people's leaderboard, um, hopefully we can top three on one of theirs instead. Because we're still above quite a few people. Tonight's the last night for Scarlet and Violet. Wait, tonight as in tonight? Or tonight as in it resets at like 7 tomorrow? Or 8 tomorrow, whatever it is. Because I'll probably do it tomorrow morning then. I wasn't planning on farming it though. I was just going to catch one. Oh yeah, that's the time that's resetting. Okay, so I have all day tomorrow. Let's do it after dinner. Because I did want to re-catch it. It does let you re-catch it, right? Because I wanted to re-catch it in a different ball than what I did last time. Assuming it's re-catchable. Uh, 
Oh, if you already have one, it doesn't let you recatch it? Oh, never mind. I can just ignore the event then. Because I don't care about farming it. Doesn't the Herba Mystica glitch still work on alt accounts? They haven't patched that, right? Because I can just sandwich off my alt if I ever want to. Because I'm pretty sure they still haven't fixed the, um, the disconnect sandwich glitch. Where you get to keep all your resources. Because it doesn't save as soon as you do a sandwich, unless they've changed that. For last I recall, they haven't actually patched it. They have not fixed that feature. <laughs> I like how you say feature and not bug. <laughs> because that's basically infinite Herba Mystica right there. You just have to waste like an extra minute each time. Like sometimes I still just make the sandwich on the spot because it's just quicker. Honestly, I haven't even played that game. But not counting the raid battles. I haven't played Scarlet and Violet since we last streamed it. Ignoring all the exclusive raid events that they've had. But excluding that, I literally have not played the game since we last streamed. Same as Power World, oddly enough. Everything Pokemon related I haven't really been doing lately. Though, uh, Power World does seem to have some big update coming in the very soon. I'll definitely check it out then. Maybe even for launch day. It depends what day it's launching. I'm not sure if they gave a launch date yet. I think it was just a vague coming soon rather than an actual date. I haven't actually checked it yet, so I'll need to check later. Because if they do give a natural date, well, we'll probably stream that day as well. Assuming I'm free. Because we haven't streamed Power World in like a month now. And I did enjoy that game a ton. I've just kind of been waiting until they do updates. And they're about to do the update now. Alright, that should be all we need. How are we doing on score? This should be fifth place, which is hopefully someone's top three. Oh, there we go. Alright, I'm happy with that. I'll leave that there for now. Anyways, guys, uh, we will be back tomorrow, same time as always, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, hour and a half prior to now tomorrow. Our main game plan for tomorrow is uh, go over all the weekly spoilers, finishing up all the events, probably doing a lot of uh, scouting for the Underworld, or Underspire, and hoping that we can find um, one of those troops. Uh, we're three months without one, so hopefully we'll see one soon uh, for the uh, Underspire troops. And uh, finish out the uh, faction event. Because we're just uh, literally one floor away. Or two floors, depending on how you look at it. So we're good to go. Don't even need the Vow Raven there. But anyways, guys. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Stay safe out there. I will catch you guys soon. Thank you so much for stopping by as always. Greatly appreciated. Appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. And thanks for watching.